lovers and welcome to Authors Love Bookstores presented by A Mighty Blaze. My name is Kimberly Hensel Lawrence and I'm your host today. For those of you who are new to A Mighty Blaze, let me tell you a little bit about us. Um, a Mighty Blaze is a volunteer effort of writers and creatives who love books and storytelling and authors and bookstores. We work to bring attention to these essential parts of our culture during the COVID pandemic and beyond. Authors Love Bookstores is a weekly program hosted by myself and by my co-host, Joe Moldover, who you may see on opposite weeks. Um, our goal is to highlight indie bookstores across the United States and Canada, to tell you what makes them so special, um, and what you can do to help with their continued survival during these very difficult times. We do this by speaking with booksellers and the authors who love their bookstores and want to tell you all about them. If you're watching live with us today on Facebook, we'd love to get your questions. Feel free to post them as a comment below the broadcast. Now let's get started. We are so lucky today to welcome author Lee Smith to Authors Love Bookstores. She told me Thank I have you. to shorten the bio that I had prepared for her. So <laughs> suffice it to say, <laughs> Lee is the best-selling award-winning author of 14 novels and many other books, um, one of which is The Lost Girls, which I am reading right now and really <laughs> enjoying. You should right. read it too. Um, Lee has won so many prizes, um, <laughs> including the O. Henry Award for her short story writing, the American Academy um, and, of Arts and Letters Award for Fiction, and many others. She began writing as a child growing up in the Appalachian Mountains in southwestern Virginia, her first novel, The Last Day the Dog Bushes Bloomed, was published in 1968, and she's been incredibly prolific since then. Her latest book is the novella Blue Marlin, which was published in April. She is joining us. Oh, I should add that in addition to novels, she writes short stories, short story collections, memoirs, oral histories, and even a musical. <laughs> Are you happy at the musical? I was so excited about it. Um, I can't sing, though. I can't sing. I can't, I can't even imagine why it's so impressive. Um, Lee is joining us today to talk about one of her favorite independent bookstores, Compass Roads, Rose Books. Compass Rose Books in Castine, Maine. Did I get the Castine right? I, you did. All right. Um, welcome, Lee. We're so happy to have you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here and I love to come and talk about bookstores, especially this bookstore. So this is great. Thanks. Perfect. And so with us from Compass Rose Books is owner Johanna Barrett. Welcome, Johanna. We're so happy you're here. Thank you so much for having me. Now, let's ground our viewers in a little bit about the store. Tell us where Castine, Maine is. It is, what I understand is about an hour from Bar Harbor about three and a half hours from Portland. Mm -hmm. So for those of our viewers who do not, have not had the pleasure of visiting Maine, don't understand Maine geography, can you tell us a little bit about where, where you're located and a little bit up about the community that you serve? Sure, so we are on the down east coast of Maine. If you're looking at a map of Maine, you'll go about halfway up the state and we are a little peninsula about midway up the state jutting out into the East Penobscot Bay. Um, as Kim said, we're about an hour away from Bar Harbor, which many people are familiar with. We have a really small, small community. Our year-round population here hovers around 1,000. We're home to Maine Maritime Academy, which has another 1,000 students. Um, and then in the summertime, we're a very popular seasonal destination. We have a long history of um, folks coming here to rusticate um, and also to put down uh, sort of seasonal roots, if you will. Um, this town uh, was very, very prominent, has a really prominent history. Um, it was first settled in the 1600s, so people have been coming here um, uh, to, to this place for a very, very long time. Um, our community is super, super interesting. It's it is the place I wanted to open a bookstore because we have everything. We have um, gener intergenerational spans of readers. Um, people are incredibly tuned into their local businesses here. Um, it really is the ideal place for a little community-oriented um, bookstore. 
Um, we have a small cafe. We're open year round, which is very unusual here because it gets quiet and cold and icy on the coast of Maine in the middle of winter. Um, but, um, but we're here. It's also, I have to say, exceptionally beautiful. This is probably one of the loveliest landscapes anywhere. Um, we, our store is just up from the town dock. So when you are outside our store, you can look down and see everything from merchant marine vessels coming in to scallop draggers to people on their sailboats. It's really a very remarkable little place. Wonderful. It sounds like the kind of place we all want to go to now more than It ever. is kind of the place we all want to go to, yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. there's been a bookstore in the location where Compass Rose is for 20 years. Yes, there but, there has been. But mm -hmm. your bookstore is two years old, is that? Yes. Tell us a so, little bit about how you came to be a bookstore owner in this town. Yes, um, so I discovered this town like a lot of people do by boats. Um, and I came up from the town dock and I saw the sign. It was, it's been called Compass Rose Books for quite some time. Um, and I walked up the hill and I just thought, this is the most magical thing in the universe. Um, and I came to visit the bookstore and I picked up a couple of books about casting history. Um, and that was, that was quite a few years ago. Um, and then I started to hear through the grapevine that the previous owner was, um, ready to, to sort of let things uh, go on as so often happens with, with small, small businesses. Um, and it was probably a good three or four years in the making. Um, but I, I just, I just knew that this was the place I wanted to, um, wanted to be and I wanted to carry on uh, this, this tradition here. Um, and in 2018, sort of all the pieces fell together. Um, and we opened our doors in October of 2018. And then the following summer, we opened um, the back part of the store, which has a, a little cafe. We're just shy of about 2,000 square feet. Um, and we renovated pretty extensively. And we've been really, on, truly going strong ever since. Now, Lee, how is it that you wanted to talk about Compass Rose Books today? Because you are a Southerner. So... How, how is it that you are in Maine and this bookstore? Tell us a little bit about that. I'm a Southerner, but I've been coming to Castine, Maine now for, I don't know, um, over 20 years. Uh, I married a man who had this habit of coming to Maine in the summertime, which was something I never even thought of or considered. And love it, love it. And so I had come with him up to Maine for a number of years. And then uh, we got married and we bought a house and here we are. So this is my bookstore. I'm up here, you know, I'm up here into probably November or something like that. And so this is my bookstore and I feel very proprietary about it as does everybody in this town, I think, because it is so central to the town and the life of the town. Uh, as Johanna was saying, the location is wonderful. It's so easy to get there by boat, by water, you know, because she's right in front of the dock. The, the street ends right at the dock. And so people come by water or they come, you know, in their cars. And there she is right there next to the dock, next to the place where you get your lobster rolls, next to the uh, art annex, which is an art co-op and you know the bank everything is right there it is literally the heart of the town and she runs it like it's the heart of the town it's very <laughs> welcoming and um you know a wonderful place so this is why i chose it i go in every day that it's open <laughs> you just spoke to my, my new england heart lobster roll <laughs> book yeah what's better <laughs> Every New Englander knows that's summer, right? Like that's a beautiful right. lobster roll and a fantastic book to sit by the water. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, Johanna, this has been an unexpected year <laughs> for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> um, a massive understatement, but this has been a, a, a difficult year and um, for many, for all of us in different ways. Yeah. It's been especially difficult for bookstores. So, how has Compass Rose been doing these past couple months? How have you managed to continue to thrive during this time? You want to hear? So I feel like bookstores are, we were sort of tailor-made 
for this, right? Because we have books and puzzles and art supplies and and the, the sorts of things that you need to have when you're hunkered down. Um, so because we are in such a small town and we are one of the only retail establishments open during the winter, um, we, we have that as our advantage. Um, so we closed our doors in, in the second week in March um, and then the state ordered that we close. Bookstores were not considered essential uh, businesses for some strange reason in Maine. Um, and we just, um, and I forgot to turn off the phone. That's okay. Um, we, we just went to curbside um, delivery um, and we also delivered directly to people's front porches. Um, that I have to say was enormously fun to be able to deliver a beautifully packaged um, little gift to somebody's front door and then wave to them and have a conversation um, you know, from their driveway was was really, really lovely for me, I think, as well as for for customers. Um, and then in early June, we opened very carefully to the public, I think the way that a lot of small businesses did with limits on customers and, and masks and all of these requirements. Um, and we've, we've been doing well, it's, it's hard um, to talk business for a minute, it's only our yeah. second season. So we don't have a lot to compare it to. But I can say that we we weathered this well, and and we're not going anywhere. Um, um, and and the other thing that I will say is that um, the bookstore I really built the bookstore around serving my community, the community here first. Um, and I think that mattered because people really made the effort to come out and support us. Uh, and I think that is a hallmark of small businesses, especially in these sort of tucked away communities like we have here in Maine. Um, we, we're really interdependent and small businesses very much serve the communities that they're rooted in. We've heard that from all the bookstores we've talked to these, these past couple of months, we've heard that over and over again that what has made the huge difference between a bookstore that has been forced to close and one that has been able to stay open has been community support, has been the yeah. people who prioritize buying books and puzzles and art supplies just as much as toilet paper, <laughs> right? right? You know, I know in my in my life, the first place I went to when we got the shutdown was my local bookstore, right? So, because we know we need these businesses, right? So that's such a wonderful, um, you know, vote of confidence. And so it is so truly. Yeah. And so Lee, you said that you're at the bookstore every day. <laughs> yeah. And you can. yeah. She what gets her flowers here. She gets coffee here. She buys her own books here for Pete's sake. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody else's books. But it's just <laughs> this is true. And also I have to say one one reason. I want to go there every day is that she keeps changing it it's not like you go in the bookstore and the same books are on the thing no she has these different sort of ways of displaying that all change around and there's one round table when you first go in and whatever's happening now that's what's on that table you know if it's mary trump whatever it is there it is you know and it's always different. It's always new. I mean, and it's it's wonderful to see. And there's all kinds of you know people with offer people with all kinds of interests. But I think the way the way Johanna the term she uses is that it, this bookstore is carefully curated. Okay, which is a term I've never heard before, but it is, and it changes absolutely day to day as to what's here. There's a small display of this and of that. And therefore you don't get lost. I mean, when I go in a big bookstore now, I just look at the whole big thing and think, oh no, you know, cause it's just, it gets confusing. Whereas she has, you know, a number of books you really want and you can sort of see them because there are only some there. They're not all jumped in. They're not like this. They're not like my, my office, you know, they're just, you know, they're just a few and they're attractively displayed and so on and it changes all the time so and do that's you, you want to go every day so we and so i imagine the thing about that is that you discover an author that or a book that you hadn't heard oh, of before 
always because you can see that author and it's, it's displayed it's sort of shown to you as you know along with other stuff that she already knows you're going to like she knows you're going to like it you know so and then also she mentioned like okay on thursdays the fresh flowers come <laughs> so i'm signed up for a bouquet right so i had to go in on thursdays for my bouquet and then you know it just it all depends on the day but um you know, and you always need some coffee. But the other thing is, there's not a lot of junk in there. You know, this 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 is the store that's about the bookstore. I mean, they're not all these little awful mugs. You know what I mean? One time I went in a bookstore in New England, and for sale they had moose turd earrings. You know, there are no moose turd earrings here. There are no cutesy cutesy mugs and cutesy cutesy things for the grandchildren. I mean, you know, there's some good things for the grandchildren. There's some good books. There's um, wonderful art supplies and all of this kind of thing. But um, it's it's all the real thing. We're already getting audience questions. And so one of the questions that has come in is, does Johanna have a favorite Lee Smith novel? And if so, or a book actually, book, because I know you've written nonfiction. Do you have a favorite Lee Smith book? And if so, which one? I do. I have two favorite books. Um, the first one is, well, actually there's three. I'll be concise. Um, so. <laughs> So oral history is definitely one of my favorites in part because it's the first book of hers that I read. This came out in 1983. Um, and it's very much the, the written oral histories of these characters from um, Appalachia where Lee grew up. Um, and one of the reasons this book resonates for me is that it is written in the dialect and the language um, of uh, Appalachia. And I know that that is changing as time moves on. Um, so I loved this book, it's short stories. Um, the next book of Lee's that I absolutely love is Dime Store, primarily because Lee apparently also had to get honest to God lady classes, which is something that I can relate to. That's when you're a young person and your parents send you off to learn how to behave and not let lulls in conversation happen and have good manners. Um, and she writes so eloquently, this, it's laugh aloud funny in many places, and then it's also intensely um, uh, personal in, in other places. Um, and towards the very back, she writes um, a little bit about, um, about Castine and some of the authors here as well. Um, and then the, the third book of Lee's that I, I recommend to just about everybody um, is called Black Mountain Breakdown. Um, that book, I think, is also an older one, Lee. I think yeah. that one came out in the 80s as well. Um, yeah. And that, to, to my mind, is a coming of age story. Um, and it's timeless. That's a book that I reread um, probably every year. Um, Crystal Spangler is the main character and she, she just resonates. Thank you, thank you, yes. thank you. All my relatives were just horrified when I published that book. I oh, said, honey, it's so dark. <laughs> I said, aren't you happy? <laughs> Not so much. Because <laughs> it's hard to grow up. It is a coming of age story. It, yeah. 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 Lee, is there any greater compliment than hearing from a reader that they reread your book every year? No. No, there is not. And there are books that I reread every year too. And I, you know, I, under, I, I understand that. Okay. They become, I don't know, like our familiars. I mean, they become things, you know, touchstones that you have to, you know, that you have to, to go back to. They become your friends. The characters become, that resonate are, are, are friends that you mm -hmm. want to check in with. Mm -hmm. And you yep. carry a little bit of them with you? after you read them too? Yeah, I think. yeah, that's really true. What's something that you've been reading these past couple months during the pandemic? Um, we know that our reader, our, our viewers always wanna get book ideas. What's something that you found comfort in, whether it's a reread or something new that you've discovered? Well, a new book that I, that I just read, um, and I am thrilled because the writer used to be one of my students three million years ago, but it's an incredible novel. It's like a huge 
break in her career. It's just a huge, huge, and I had it, except I loaned it foolishly to somebody or I could hold it up. But it's it's reviewed in the New York Times this week. It's um, Jill McCorkle's new novel, Hi Hieroglyphics. Excellent. And it's just wonderful. It is a real meditation upon memory. It's about catastrophe and recovery and about the kind of um, marks that, that we all leave on time. It's a really, it sort of starts at the end and goes backward. The way it's written is brilliant and very different. And I, I couldn't recommend it more highly. And then let me show you, I just got this book, but because I'm on the show, I got to tell you, this is Carolyn Levitt's new book. Yeah, and she is the person who made up a mighty blaze, right? And got this whole thing going. So I think we all have to go out and get her book. And also, it is absolutely fascinating. I mean, it just starts with this thing that you cannot believe and goes on from there. It's, uh, it's one of those that you cannot put down. And I am right now in the middle of it. And that's, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> So I have to leave you now and finish my book. <laughs> it's excellent. Yeah, it's excellent. Yeah. We're very excited for Caroline. She is one of the founders of A Mighty Blaze and she's wonderful. And we're it's such a joy. And then I just ordered, I also just ordered from Johanna Natasha Trethaway's book because she is my favorite poet in the world, a wonderful poet. And she has written um, a memoir mm -hmm. and uh, it's a, it's, riveting i understand it's a whole it's a family murder and yes. so on and it's uh you know just amazing she has just been the i think the poet at the library of congress and she's just a wonderful poet so that, that, when is that coming in yeah. <laughs> that book called memorial drive for those people. okay yes. that's right yeah. that's right yeah, yeah. And I was sort of leaning you. over here, looking at these boxes of books because I, I have some copies of hieroglyphics buried down here. Oh, I was going to show them. Oh. Um, <laughs> that I've just started reading that book as well, and I'm I'm uh, quite taken with it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What has been popular in, from your customers in the bookstore? What have people been buying these past couple of months? Um, so books that have been really popular in, in this particular bookstore sort of fall in two big genres. One is fiction and one is uh, politics and history. Mm. Um, we have a big, uh, big contingency of folks here who are really interested in current events and current affairs. Um, but I do have um, Hamnet, Maggie O'Farrell's new book has been probably one of our most popular fiction, uh, fiction books. Um, and I also loved this particularly in this time because um, this is a book about William Shakespeare losing his son. And it's obviously takes place during the plague, which is not a period of time that is usually written about oh. in a loving or tender way. Yeah. And this book is very loving and very tender. The imagine the sort of retelling of his marriage um, and the loss of um, his child during this time is it's is beautiful um, and I think sort of resonates. We're we're kind of in in some uncertain, frightening times as well, but there is still beauty and um, and love um, in this time. So so this book has been really popular. Um, uh, the other book that is um, has been very popular is um, Richard Haas's book, um, The World. Um, he is um, a retired diplomat and writes like a diplomat. Um, so he's just able to synthesize the history of the world into this um, very readable, um, very readable book um, and and his angle really is the importance of civics and and understanding your own history and your role in your own history. Um, so that has been one of our most popular nonfiction books. Um, uh, and it just came out. Um, I can grab a copy of it if you need to see the cover. That's okay. um, the other book that is very popular here every summer, I love this book. Um, this is a book by John White, um, a scientist and a surfer. It's called Tides and we are right on the ocean. Um, and this is um, a history of, of tidal activity and tides um, and how 
different cultures around the world understand the tides. Um, this is, I think this just cuts across genres. If you're not usually a nonfiction reader, this is a book to, to get into. Um, uh, so this one is always popular in the summer. I hand sell this one a lot. Terrific. So in normal times, <laughs> um, do you, you host events at your store? Community I events, do. author events? Has there been one that's been particularly memorable that you'd want to tell our audience about? Boy, we've had uh, we've had so many good ones. Um, in normal times, um, we we host events. We often host them with um, Annex Arts, which is um, an art artists and writers residency program uh, founded by um, Goody B. Wiseman, who has a gallery next door. Um, we also host events with our arts association here. So we do a lot of cooperation. Um, late last fall, we had a great, great event with Dan Leader, who is a baker, uh, the founder of Bread Alone Bakery in upstate New York. He now lives in Castine. Um, this area has a really strong farm to table culture um, and we have a fantastic um, uh, wood fired bakery here called Tinder Hearth and uh, Dan Leader and the founder of Tinder Hearth and his wife were here. The place was packed. It smelled like fabulous, <laughs> delicious, fresh bread and rich homemade butter and it was so joyful. We had Stuart Kestenbaum, who is Maine's Poet Laureate, was here as well. So I found myself in conversation with him while I was eating this fantastic bread. And, you know, people were just sort of spilling out and coming in. And it was fall. So it was that crisp um, New England fall where, you know, all of those things just came together. It was so lovely. Um, and the other, the other event that I have to say is equally lovely is um, last winter, around uh, December, we decided to have a bonfire in front of the store. So I went to our select board and I sort of announced that I was going to have a bonfire in front of my bookstore and, um, and they approved and we, you know, stacked up wood in front of the bookstore and that evening we just had a big bonfire and children roasted marshmallows and you know people mingled and um, again it was it was just lovely. That's an understatement. It was it was everything that you imagine a lovely New England winter evening to be. That is so great. So your bonfire yeah. was right on the street. <laughs> It and was you go out of the bookstore. There's the sidewalk and there's the street. So you had it right yep. in the middle of the street, which yep, is it was end of Main Street going down where it hits the harbor. You can't imagine how picturesque this must have been. Oh my goodness. I, I it was there. I can't stand it. Oh. Um it and an, another that sounds fit like just glorious. I mean also quintessentially Maine also. The oh, yes. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. so perfect. Yeah. Um, the other event that I saw that you did was a community read along of Lee's book, Blue Marlin. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, absolutely. So the community read along was um, in large part the brainchild, again, of Goody B. Wiseman and Annex Arts, because all of our in-person residencies obviously were canceled because of the pandemic. Um, and we wanted to stay connected with the community and wanted readers to be able to connect with authors and new books, even though we couldn't do things in person. Um, so Annex Arts um, spearheaded this community read and we did two books this summer. Um, and Lee's book was the first, the first one of the summer and we chose it because it's in many ways, I think um, this, joyful coming of age story that everybody can relate to. It, it doesn't matter your walk of life or who you are, or where you grew up, the turmoil of discovering that your parents are people independent of you and they have these complex lives, that's universal. Right. Um, so it, it sort of fit. It was the right book for everybody in this community to be able to read. And that event was virtual, 100% virtual. We sold the books here, obviously, and Lee came and, and signed them for us. Um, and um, one of our residents here who is um, a high school uh, English teacher, um, 
conducted the the interview and the the conversation with Lee over yes. Zoom. Um, and I think it was a resounding success. And I actually understand that we're going to continue doing it even once we resume in person events. Tell them about the other book that it's just a knockout. Yes. So the second book, um, I'm looking to see if I have a copy of it. The second book is Call Me okay. American by Abdi Noor Iftin, who, was, who is a Somali um, immigrant. He's now a U.S. citizen. He came to the United States and came to Maine as a young, a very young man, a child, really. Um, and his memoir is very much about um, his childhood and bridging these two cultures and and uh, also a reminder, I think, of, of the promise of this nation and why people come here. Um, and that book felt, we, we had powerful feelings about that oh, book um, yeah. because of the political times that we're in. Um, and also for that, that very reminder that this is a place that is open and welcoming and this is the place that people want to come to. Um, and again, we had a community read so that the entire community could read that book. And then um, Abdi had a conversation again via Zoom. Um, and he will be coming to Castine in person next year to do his two week residency. Um, so we'll, we'll definitely have more of him here in town. Can you repeat the title of the book one more time? It's called Call Me American. And, uh, and the author is Abdi Noor Iftin. Okay. And we'll put a link to it below the broadcast so people can find it. Um, Great. Now, you've mentioned twice residencies. So can you tell a little, explain the arts residencies? That yes. So Annex Arts um, provides one to two week in-person residence, residencies for artists and writers. They come to Castine and they live right in the heart of town. And it's, again, a very small town. Um, so they have um, apartments um, that are, I, we can see them here from the bookstore. Um, and the residencies are really um, about allowing authors and um, artists to step outside of their every day and um, mingle with this community and with each other um, and focus a little bit more on process and not necessarily on a finished product, but the process of creating. Um, and they have access to gallery space. Every Friday evening, there is um, an, um, a showing. Um, and they offer workshops and other ways to engage with their with the community um, and also importantly with each others so they're not sort of isolated and you know working in their room by themselves but they're they're really within the community um, the other thing I think that's important to mention about the residencies is that um, they are very tuned into um, artists who are also parents. So the residencies provide some uh, childcare and options for things, things for young children to do here on the coast uh, while their parents and particularly their mothers um, create. That's fabulous. Yeah. So if, if viewers want to learn more about that, they should Google the casino. They the would program. go, you would Google annexarts.org. There you go. Thank you. <clears throat> now, Lee, what else do you want our viewers to know about this very special bookstore where you get your coffee and your books and your flowers and you go every day and I want to meet you there and have a coffee and look at the water. So jealous. Well, there's one, th one thing that I think that I think we could ask Johanna that was so interesting to me because I was in there talking to her and messing around and so on before the bookstore ever opened the year before, you know, when she was just starting and so on. And she was doing something that I have never heard of any other uh, bookstore owner doing or almost any other business owner, which was she was um, starting out by going all over town, canvassing people in this town about what they would want in a bookstore in their town. What would they appreciate having here in Castine? What kind of a bookstore would they appreciate having? So 
I want you to tell everybody about that. I know you, obviously, you went to people that you knew were in book clubs, but who else did you go to? How'd you do this? So, um, very unusual. Yes. So, um, uh, boy, where to begin? Um, I knew when I was putting together this idea for the bookstore that I wanted to build something sustainable, meaning something that was going to outlive me and be here for a long time. Um, and I also knew I wanted a well curated bookstore. I wanted to be able to put the right book into each customer's hand. Um, so I started by just doing some homework. And I suppose I should also say that I'm an economist by training. So so doing uh, sort of data driven homework is kind of where I intuitively go to. Um, but I did do, you know, almost what you might call focus groups with people who live here year round. I did some with the academy students um, and I talked to people who are committed to this town and live here seasonally to find out you know, the basic question was, what do you want in a local bookstore? What's going to compel you to walk into my store as opposed to shopping online or going somewhere else? Um, and that, that information was honestly really crucial to putting together the store that we now have. Um, MMA students wanted to have really good Wi-Fi in a place that they could sit down in between classes and come in a little later in the day. Um, the young people, so the children who live here in town, they wanted a good selection of kids books and they wanted some fun things like art supplies. Um, and then I definitely learned from a lot of readers that they wanted a good mystery section and they wanted a lot of fiction. And so I used that to sort of, you know, build the store to be what it is now. I think, um, I can't, I couldn't just create a store that was a reflection of, of my personal taste. And I also didn't want a store that looked like every other bookstore where I didn't know exactly what I had on the shelf. So, so that was my way of um, sort of creating the unique, what I think is the unique space we have here. It also builds community connection to your store. Yes. You feel invested yep. in what's being created. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You yep. you also are unusual in that you have something called the book boat. We have a yes. question from the audience. What is the book boat? <laughs> the audience asks. Can you explain? Yeah. So the book boat is uh, a little free library, um, and typically in the summer months it lives a little bit closer to the town dock, and then in the winter it migrates right outside our store. Um, and it's a it's a free book exchange. And a lot of people have said to me, why on earth would you have that right next to the door of your bookstore? You're a bookstore. <laughs> How does that work? Um, and my answer is uh, sort of twofold. One, there's, there's an economic reason for having a little free library. Books and words, I think, should be accessible to everyone. And it's not my job to determine what the right price is for somebody. Um, we have folks who use the book boat um, and then they come in periodically to buy something special. And that is just as valuable to me uh, as the people who come in um, and, and buy books and things on a, on a daily basis. I think it's really important for small businesses as counterintuitive as it is to um, offer things that are economically accessible to everybody um, in your community. Um, so that's that's one piece. And the second the second thing about the book boat is that we have so many people who are in transition here. They're staying for a shorter period of time. They're coming off of boats. Um, our library, like so many libraries, were, um, was closed during uh, the past few months. And the ability to browse or the ability to look at uh, different books and select something was just taken away. Um, and we were really careful with the book boat, um, but it provided people that opportunity to browse a little bit, to leave a book, to take a book. Yeah. Um, and it may end up just living here for the duration because it's been, it's, it's been marvelous. Um, I think that 
every community, no matter how many libraries or bookstores it may have, um, can do right by having some form of free exchange of books. Um, we also put area trail guides in there. Sometimes our local nonprofits have annual reports or things that they would like to get out. So we put those in there. Um, there's any number of, of things that a, a free exchange can, can do uh, for a community. Terrific. Uh, thank you for explaining that to us. Now we're coming to the end of our time together. So I wanted to give the two of you an opportunity. Johanna, any questions for Lee? Lee, any questions for Johanna? Anything you wanted to ask while the camera's on and we're live on the internet? I, well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, some, some people, I, some people get very excited about meeting movie stars and I, I just get all excited and turned around when I meet authors um so my my question uh is a question that i have for many authors in this time how how do you and can you clear away noise so that you can write and create the work in these stories that we talked about that we live with and and love over time is it possible to to shut things out, or do you just let that all in? How, how do you how do you write in times like this? Well, I think I've heard a lot of people say that they are having trouble writing right now during COVID, during the pandemic, um, because it's hard to concentrate. And mm -hmm. I have heard that with reading too. That people some some people they you know I've been glad I have a very short book out right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's but it's true, and it is hard to concentrate. I don't know. For me, I've been doing it for so long. It's just like when I sit down to write, it's just like walking into another place, mm. you know. And I can go there, and and I've done it so much. That's what I do, and it's really actually refreshing to me to then come back into a time of trouble, but I feel more ready to deal. You know, mm -hmm. I feel I feel more relaxed. I feel whatever because I had this time, you know, in another place in time, whatever I'm writing about. But I've been doing it for so long. It's like I go into a little trance and, and that's what mm. I do. But I do want to say during this time of COVID, I'm also uh, not only writing fiction, but spending some real time just writing things down that are happening. Mm. Because, you know, mm -hmm. this is important. This is unprecedented. We are living in a time where none of us have ever been before. And I think it's really important to write down things that hit us, things you observe, things you hear, all of that. Because this is really important and this is happening to us. And I particularly think that it's helpful for children to mm. be writing and to keeping. I, I, like, I like it when kids keep a journal that also involves art. You know, that instead yeah. of a little journal, they've got more like a sketchbook and they're writing down stuff that happens and they're drawing things and they're picking up stuff that they found that day and cutting out stuff from the paper or just whatever. And just because, you know, this is something they will want. This is something that will be very uh, important to them to have. I mean, this is so important. This is happening to, to them, to us, to you, you know, me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I think it's, it's a time to encourage that. And you have got, Johanna has got this incredible little workbook for kids that you sell in the store that mm -hmm. includes that kind of thing. It's like a little place to write and it has, you know, my weirdest neighbor and you have a chance to write or what I dreamed last night and you have a chance to write and all that kind of thing. I, I think it's awfully important for us to foster um, self-expression, you know, from all the kids now because it's a, sc it's a scary time. And at the time, they will want to know what they thought. So then they'll have what they wrote, you know, what they put together. So. And people yeah. who live outside of Christine, Maine can support Compass Rose Books, right? You have some online ordering capabilities on your website. They can, we do. They can call you up for a recommendation, especially they if they can. want to an author to read. They absolutely can do that. Um, we, I think like a lot of small businesses had to pivot pretty quickly and um, build out our website. 
um, uh, uh, which we did. And um, so yes, people can absolutely call us or reach out at compassrosebookscasting.com um, and um, order books from us, ask us for recommendations. Uh, we spend a lot of time doing that. <laughs> Excellent. And for our viewers, if you're interested in learning more about Lee's amazing career in all of her books and that musical and her memoirs and her oral histories, you can go to her website, which is leesmith.com. And again, the bookstore's website is compassrosebookscasting.com. And we are so grateful that both of you were here today with us on Authors Love Bookstores. Thank you so much for making time to share a little bit of your piece of Maine, which sounds like heaven. Yeah, all of us. <laughs> Maybe stuck in our homes, but we have now been we're now thinking of beautiful ocean views, winter bonfires, and of course, amazing lobster rolls and fabulous books. <laughs> what else is there really? There's nothing else. <laughs> Viewers, thank you so much for being here today with thank us. You. Thank everybody. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks for being with us here on a Mighty Blazes Authors Love Bookstores. Join us next week for another edition of our amazing conversation with authors and booksellers. Until then, be well and keep reading. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.